major European lines that and their uh, endeavors to cross the Atlantic. And uh, my presentation will be in a way related to that, in a sense that this major airline companies affected the, the development of the civil aviation in some of the smaller continental European countries and Eastern European countries in the first part. And in the second part, people talk about the beginning of the war and how some of the routes developed by some of these major European companies in connected to the East Europe became the major routes of the mail between the United States uh, and Eastern Europe and uh, even the Middle East. So, the Kingdom of Yugoslavia originally called the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenians from 1918 after the World War I. And it had a group of the very young pilots that came out of the war and initially started this, they saw the importance of the civil aviation and the airlines and started the club, which was called the Halloween's Club, Nasha Krila, and they tried to uh, start the domestic airline company and also to uh, try to create out of Yugoslavia a link between the Western and Eastern Europe. And as you can see, uh, they started negotiations initially with the French and gave to uh, Company Franco Roumain, which was actually a joint venture between France and Romania, uh, the, uh, they signed a contract with them and they gave them the rights to land in Belgium. So the line went from Paris, France, over Germany to Prague, and one link one, uh, went to Warsaw, and then the service went south to Vienna, Budapest, and Hungary, Belgrade. Bucharest and it ended up in Istanbul. This is the first transcontinental airlines, and actually there was always discussion if it is or not, but anyway, this is the way the line went. So the idea was that Yugoslavia, which was on the crossroad between West and East and Southeast Europe, and Athens becomes the link uh, of the, uh, of the, for the airlines. This is actually the, as we know, the only surviving card that went on the first flight from Belgrade on the 16th of April, 1923. <clears throat> it went west of Paris, and it, went, it was sent by one of the journalists, actually, who was on the flight. Interestingly enough, uh, the, uh, because of the bad weather and the uh, uh, airplanes had to stop every few hundred miles, the guys, the journalists who sat on the train and went to Paris to finish the reporting on the plane actually made it there faster than the, the airplane did. Uh, two interesting facts. Oops. Here we go, Jim. Uh, one, there is this red cancel, which is a special uh, air, air surcharge cancel that was applied on the surcharge for the airmail, which was actually, actually done as a 50% surcharge to the international airmail and the registration fee. Now, in 1927, the same group of pilots managed to uh, uh, start the domestic, uh, to create in that capital, to start a domestic company, Group. again, with the idea to connect all the uh, cities in the country and as well to be the link between North and West. What is important is that the infrastructure was very bad, they needed the airlines and also what they wanted to do is to allow the mail from west of the country to come to Belgrade and then to be connected to the Franco Romain to be flown either to Paris or south to Istanbul. It's a very small distance, only the 250 miles, but it played a very important role. Now, this is the cover that was on the first flight. It was sent from the uh, military attaché, uh, Czech military attaché in, uh, in, Zag in Belgrade to the consulate of the Czech uh, Republic of Czechoslovakia in Zagreb at the time. Now, in their endeavors to really uh, start, start uh, flying to the Western Europe, they started the, the, the management of the Iraqi company, started with OLAG first. OLAG, which was the Austrian Airlines, actually formed by Lufthansa, 
and they discussed the possibility in 29 to organize the flights between Belgrade to Zagreb and to, uh, and to Vienna. This was the experimental flight cover. Now, what you see new here is number one, this triangle on males, and anybody who collects Zeppelins will see these uh, cancels on the Zeppelin mail. And naturally, now they started adding the search as based on the distance uh, from the destination, not anymore as a 50% addition to the surcharge. This is the route. It went from Belgrade to Zagreb to Graz and to Vienna. So it tied in with the French line that went to Belgrade, so it created kind of a circular route here. Uh, this gave it the sped of the uh, dispatch of the mail and shortened quite a bit for the period of time. This is the card issued for that first flight in March of 1930 uh, from Vienna to Belgrade. And uh, the interesting fact that this was sent to the Mr. De Rocco, who was the major uh, philatelic authority in Yugoslavia, wrote a number of the books. Now, second comes in Lufthansa. Lufthansa, who was already becoming a major power and who already was flying to, in 1927, to Vienna, and so the mail could now be sent from Belgrade to, through Vienna to Germany. They had the flights there, but now they start the discussion and the possibility to see if they will fly down to South to Balkans. This is the route that started in May of 1930. As you can see, it kind of tied to the Vienna flights, went to Budapest, Belgrade, Sofia, and Istanbul. So this is the commercial cover that was sent early on in June of 1930 to Dresden. Again, triangular cancel and the surcharge, which was based on the distance of the country. Czechs came in next. They looked more to the west. They went from Prague and Brno, again Vienna, Zagreb, going down to Sushak, which is actually a port of Rijeka, Fiume, which was half divided between Italy and Yugoslavia at the time. And uh, uh, so the airport was actually on a field on top of Rijeka. And then uh, ultimately it ended up in Venice. This is the cover from that flight that went from Susha all the way up to Czech Republic. Now, the other two major companies, Imperial Airways and KLM, also used the, uh, to fly over the territory. Imperial Airways tried in 29 to, they got into fight with Italians, so they said, we're going to change the route, we're going to fly to Yugoslavia. Actually, that was a disaster because the winter was very bad. Uh, they had to go by train, so they gave up that road very quickly. KLM only stopped in Belgrade for the refueling. Now, this is the 1937 early 1937 routes of the services that major airlines had into, into Yugoslavia and through Yugoslavia. What you notice here, which is interesting, Istanbul became less interesting. Athens became the major hub between Western Europe on the way to, uh, to uh, the Middle East and Asia. So you see that all the lines actually, the, the Germans flew to Sofia, Thessaloniki and Athens. French went from Belgrade down to Thessaloniki, Skopje, Thessaloniki and Athens. And so the Austrians and the Yugoslav airlines. So uh, the air aeroport, the Yugoslav airline, had a connection between Vienna and Athens, as did French and the German airlines. Now, what we see here is the absence of the Italian. And as Mr. Pesoli said yesterday, Italians kind of came late into the game of the major airlines. So in 1934, the Italian government decided to nationalize four of the smaller uh, airlines in Italy and created Alla Littoria in 1934. And the task of the Alla Littoria was to fly all the international routes, also going to Middle East and also going to Europe. Ali was the only private company left for two reasons. One. It was formed by Fiat in 1926, too. It flew major route to Berlin. So, in 1930, actually late 36, Italian government 
in this expansion, expansion efforts decided to approach Yugoslav and Romanian governments to create two more services. They, in 19, early 1937, uh, Count Ciano, who was the Minister of the Foreign Affairs of Italy and actually was son-in-law of Mussolini, came to Belgrade, made with the Ministers of Foreign Affairs and the heads of the airlines, both Romania and Yugoslav, and they agreed to form two new services. One would go from Bucharest, which we, we can call Express Line, by Alan Vittoria Bucharest, Belgrade, Rome, and the other one, the local one, was going from Belgrade and to Zagreb, Susha, and then finishing in Venice, then being connected out to Rome. Also, they already have the numbers of the services which are attached to the particular flights. Italians, as always, have beautiful designs, so here is the nice card from the first day flight. Actually, this is the flight return flight from Belgrade to Rome, with logos of Italian, Yugoslav and the Romanian company, and their flags. Now, we are moving forward to 1939, when the uh, Pan Am started their uh, service from New York to, uh, to Europe. And what uh, we mostly know this fact that in May they started the southern route, the northern route started slightly late, later, in June 24, 1939. When doing the research, I found an interesting uh, note because Juan Tripper made a presentation to the Royal Aeronautical Society in London in 1941. And at the time, he called southern route, as we call it southern route, he called it the Atlantic route. And he said about the north that he called it Great Circle Route. That's a very interesting fact that I just found out recently. <coughs> now, for the East Europe, <coughs> it was a very simple and very fast operation. The mail will be sent from any of the cities along the line to Paris. It will fly down to Marseille. And then it will pick up the, uh, the, with the air, the, with the air mail will be picked up by Pan Am and flown to New York. As you see, the flights went around uh, Spain, the uh, Iberian Peninsula, because the Spanish could not allow it to, to fly over Spanish territory. There was still a uh, civil war going on, plus the Franco regime was not very excited about letting the Americans fly over his territory. This is the cover, very early, as uh, Atkins called the fourth initial flight, which was mailed from New York by the journalist who was representing the Daily in Belgrade Politica. And as you can see, it took it only six days from New York on that flight to get to, to, get to Belgrade. Now, what also interesting was that the uh, Yugoslav Post introduced the, uh, the air surcharge for the, flight, uh, for the flights, direct flights to, or actually we can call them air to air flights to uh, United States. Until then, the surcharges were based on the flights to Paris, then by train to uh, Cherbourg or any of the ports in France, and then by ship to New York, and then you could fly. Actually, what some of the uh, people did is that they would just pay the surcharge to Paris, because practically once it reached New York, it didn't go any further, so they wouldn't have to pay for the charges, for the uh, air charges inside the United States. Now, the uh, Ala Litoria line that we discussed earlier was not that much used line in the period of time. Now, let me first show you this is the cover of the return flight, or actually the flight from Belgrade to Paris, down to Marseille, and then uh, to the United States. Again, very quick flight. It went there within a seven day. This was one of the early flights from uh, Yugoslavia uh, with the uh, uh, with Air, now Air France, to Marseille, and then to New York. Now, when the war started in Europe, uh, Civil Aeronautical Society, uh, Authority uh, re requested uh, Pan Am to shorten their destination points. And from Marseille, they moved it to Lisbon. Uh, there was a lot of 
uh, I would say the public was not sure if they could actually send the mail anymore to Europe were there any flights because there was obviously a lot of changes in the uh, flights or services that were existing in Europe. A lot of them were cancelled. Uh, Air France cancelled. Lufthansa cancelled some of their flights. So there was always an issue, can we really send the mail to Europe? This was the uh, this was the, on the page 2 or 3 of the U.S. Postal Supplement in 1939, um, this issue was addressed where the postal office says, listen, you can send the mail, it will come to Lisbon, there is still a la Vittoria line to Rome, and from Rome it can either continue in the beginning, it will still fly to the Middle East and Athens, or it can fly to Eastern Europe, or with Lufthansa it can get to Portugal and Europe. So this is how the, wild, how the mail went. It went to Lisbon, but then it went down to Africa. The reason? They could, they, nobody could still fly over Spanish territory, plus the Italians could not get to the French possessions, so they went to the Spanish possession in Africa, then they flew to Palma de Mallorca to Rome. From there on, the mail continued from Belgrade to Bucharest, all around, and then from, from Bucharest it could end up in Istanbul or by Lufthansa from Sofia to Istanbul. So practically the mail would actually be even flown to the Middle East or even Far East with this route if anybody did uh, try to send the mail that way. Uh, this is the cover from, uh, again, from New York, addressed to, this, uh, to the newspaper. Uh, it went, and there is the Italian vacillation, it went in the, uh, in, in the uh, February of 1940 to Italy and then to Belgrade. Now, two important things that happened in, in, by the end of 1939 and 1940, number one, Lati opened up the operation from Rome to South America. So the mail now from Eastern Europe would go to South America, to Rome. This is a cover, and as you can see, it says we are on the Lati. It says by, it was sent by the uh, Yugoslav Embassy in Chile to Belgrade. These are the uh, constellations of the embassy, Italian, and then it arrived to Belgrade by within uh, nine day, the ten days practically uh, from the dispatch in uh, Santiago de Chile. Now, the other important thing that happened is that Ala Vittoria could now became the, really the major route between Lisbon and the Europe, created two more, uh, two more routes. Actually, they shortened because now they could fly from, to, from Lisbon actually to Seville, Madrid, Paula de Mallorca, and later on even to Barcelona, to Rome, and then it would connect to all these other, uh, all the other countries. So the mail was going relatively, in 1940, we had really a major increase in the mail dispatches, simply because the uh, ships were uh, not uh, anymore uh, going regularly, it was very difficult, the war was raging, it was very difficult to send the mail by surface, so this was practically the only connection between the Americas and the, uh, or North America, and Eastern Europe. Naturally, Lati was still flying, and we had the mail going down in South America. This is the cover from the U.S. Embassy in Belgrade in the spring of 19, uh, in the December of uh, 1940, that was sent to Massachusetts, and it went on the flight number uh, 244 in December of 1940. Uh, the flight was held for eight days in Porta because of the bad weather, and this is why there was, just, there was a practically 26, 27 days that we took it to cross over. Now, this is extremely interesting cover because by the December of 1940, one trip he, uh, decided that because of the irregularity of the flights on the southern route, that they would start this small southern route, which would fly through Africa, across to Brazil, and then up north to the United States. It was widely thought that this first flight, which was organized in a haste, will not carry any commercial or 
uh, uh, or uh, personal mail, and most of the covers from that flight were the, the covers which are specially prepared for the flight. However, oops, sorry Jim. <laughs> As you can see by the arrival cancels, which is uh, the, the February 9th, 1949, and the Lisbon cancel because the cover arrived on the 4th of, of uh, February to, to uh, Lisbon, and the arrival cancel, it is, it is clear that this uh, cover went to the most southern route from Lisbon to Balama. Actually, it was a shorter small southern route because they went straight to Trinidad, San Juan, Puerto Rico. They stayed two days in Balama with the governor, and then they went to uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and then up to New York. Surcharge actually changed a few times. Now it's already 23.50 dinars because now it's based on the five grams because as the war was progressing, the surcharges were and the annual surcharges were increased. Now, okay, uh, this uh, in, in the winter months because the flights were, uh, Ala Victoria flights were from spring to sometimes to October. The Yugoslav Airlines Isle put, they always decided to extend the flights and they went to the end of November because by then they already had seven lucky directors so they could fly a little bit longer but they did not fly in the winter month. Uh, Lufthansa, who actually had six flights a week to, to, uh, to Athens and to Istanbul, now kept on flying continuously even in the winter months. So the mail actually went in fr from, Eastern, from Istanbul and Eastern Europe to Vienna. Then it was after that was shipped down to Rome and then from Rome to Lisbon and then up to the United States. This is a cover that shows in the way that because this is a cover from this one. It has this handwritten note here, Paradion de Belgrade, Rome and Lisbon. Actually, it doesn't guarantee that it really went that way, but we have a cancellation in Belgrade, and we have the censorship ban from the from uh, when when it, uh, when it was by the British censors. So it is obvious, even though there is no cancellation ban, that this cover actually made it to, most probably made it to the United States. Now, uh, the war started on April 6th. The Yugoslavia was uh, really attacked by German forces, supported by uh, Axis powers. So practically, uh, the country was uh, overrun and not anymore in position to send mail in out. However, there are some rare examples of the mail going either into Yugoslavia to, until the uh, the uh, final stop line by the December of 1949 to Lisbon, or the mail that went out. Now, this is the cover, which was sent just day, one day before the start of the German operation, April 5th, and we had the both British censorship end, and then the German censorship end. Most probably the cover, or there are two possible ways. One, that it went to Italy, and then to, to Vienna, because it is addressed to the northwest part of the, of the uh, now conquered Yugoslavia, which was run by the Germans, but because of the letter G, because of that means that most probably it was uh, censored in Vienna, so this is why it is guessed that it went to Rome. The other possibility, Lufthansa was now flying from Lisbon to Berlin, and this flight, this cover could have also flown on that flight to Germany and then then south. And now, for the end, uh, uh, we always have a, uh, and this is the beauty of our, us doing research, we have a cover here that has also uh, a, a little story behind it. Uh, the cover was actually sent from Chile, where it was from the port of Ipuca in Chile, and it was shipped to Arica, uh, let me find the cover right here. Arica, then it was flown along the west coast of uh, uh, South America. And I will say, uh, nine, even though, uh, as you know, this is just a contract, not a route, but it went to Cristobal, then to Miami, 
and finally made it to New York on the 1st of September. So practically it took me three days only. Now, the cover was then censored by British authorities, as you see the back here, and then it was thrown on. It came to Italy, and there is a castle here which says the, the, uh, the we call it uh, America, that means that there was, uh, in Torino, there was the, uh, the office that actually dealt with the, uh, with the mail from the United States, and it was censored there, because we see the band, which is the Italian band, which is likely torn off, but there is also the censorship mark, which we call, which is called provisional authority for the censorship. The cover then went on to Trieste, and then it ended up, it ended up in a uh, port of uh, Rieka, Fiume, Susha, which was, uh, which was then probably under the Italian occupation. Uh, what's the story behind that? As you can see, it was made by Mr. Marco Lichtin uh, from the Freighter Basilica. Freighter Basilica was the Yugoslav freighter which was uh, in the waters of Brasilia by the time when the war started. British went in and said, now this is going to be our ship, simply because this is an enemy ship. The Yugoslav government in exile, which was based in London, and still had the embassy in the United States, went to court, managed to get the vessel free, returned back to the, to the owners, but the vessel was then actually uh, being uh, used to ship various goods and uh, pharmaceuticals along the coast of the United States and Caribbean. On June 19, 1942, the vessel was sunk because it hit the mine in the waters close to, uh, close to uh, Miami. It went down, but according to the records, nobody died. So I still hope that Mr. Matkovic met with Mrs. Stepanovic after the war and maybe but I hope it was a happy ending for it. So that's the story. Thank you very much.